In an effort to debunk a claim by Donald Trump, activists in media created this monstrosity of a trash news article. It reads, Trump keeps claiming that the most dangerous cities in America are all run by Democrats. <laughs> they aren't. Really? They're not? All right, well, let's take a look over here. And wait, what's this chart you've published? Out of the top 20 with the most crime, there is one Republican city. But wait, but wait. Obviously, the cities with the biggest populations are going to have more crime, right? Well, there we go. They've actually presented this per 10,000 residents and oh, not a single Republican city. So I, I, I know this story is a couple days old, but I wanted to talk about this because I posted on Facebook. You may have seen this meme going around where it's like the most pathetic fact check that actually p- proves Trump right. And when I posted on Facebook, oh man, did these lefties come out in full force desperate to defend the Democrats and explain away how it is that the, these, that, that the most violent crime happens in Democrat controlled cities? Well, the first thing they said to me was, <laughs> excuse me, Tim, do you even understand what population size means? <laughs> You're so dumb. Yes, that's why you have the per 10,000 residence chart, but below the mayoral party in cities with the most viral crime, before the, before the actual hard numbers. Here's what I love about this argument, though. Okay, let's play this game. Let's play this game. Dem- First of all, let me just say it. Democratic cities are much worse off when it comes to violent crime than Republican controlled cities. And I'm going to go through the arguments they gave me. The first, population size. All right, let's play this game. Jacksonville, Florida is in the top. This is the top 20, right? New York, LA, Chicago, Houston, Philly, Memphis. All right. Okay. I think it's fair to point out. We'll jump over here. This is Ballotopedia, party affiliation of the mayors of the 100 largest cities. Let's see if your first point holds true, that the, 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 the number of crime is just relative to the population size. Okay. So we're starting with the population size of cities, and we can see that San Diego is number eight in terms of largest cities. And guess what? It does not appear on the, uh, on the cities with the most violent crime. Now, how could that be? But Jacksonville does, okay? And yes, Jacksonville is the 14th largest city in the country. So no, right away, you're wrong. Now, I still think it's fair to point out that population density plays a role in this, right? New York City has extreme population density, meaning more people crammed into a really tight space. That's why they have more crime than LA. The population sizes are comparable, but everybody's living on top of each other and the whole city smells like sour milk. So yeah, people, there's more crime in New York City. But it is true, okay? Obviously, more people means more crime. That's simple. It doesn't explain San Diego, which seems to be doing all right, but it is fair to say that the majority of the reason for this is going to be population size. So how about we play this game? Per 10,000 residents. When you actually go down to the per 10,000 residents, you can see that they're all Democrats save one, Springfield, Missouri, which is independent. So sure, Trump did say all of them. Is that that, that what they point out? Here's what Trump said. You hear about certain places like Chicago and you hear about what's going on in Detroit and other cities, all Democrat run. Every one of them is Democrat run. 20 out of 20. The 20 worst, the 20 most dangerous are Democrat run. Okay, fine. Yes, Trump is wrong because you can see that three of the top 20 based on just general crime are not Democrats. One's a Republican and per 10,000, one's independent. But, we, but the gist of what Trump was saying was correct. So it's a silly fact check. But let's get to the next argument. The next argument people gave me. I love it. They said, Tim, it's because Republicans don't run major cities. Duh. The major cities are all run by Democrats. Wrong. Man, these people don't do any research, okay? I didn't just post this like, derp, I saw a picture. I actually went to the work of clipping it, screenshotting it, posting it. You know what I mean? I actually looked around and read some articles. To better understand what Trump was trying to talk about, I pulled up Ballotpedia to take a look at the 100 largest cities. The argument that Republicans don't run large cities is wrong. And let me just throw it to San Diego. Republican mayor of San Diego, the eighth largest city in the country, not listed in the top crime. I wonder why that could be, right? And now I bring you to the next debunk. 29 out of the 100 largest cities are run by Republicans. Why are none of them adjusted for population in the most violent cities? Explain that to me. You can't. 
The only thing you can really say is I guess Democrats are bad at what they do. They try to play this game where they said, if Democrats tend to run, you know, more uh, urban areas and Republicans run more can, uh, more rural areas, well, that explains everything. No, it doesn't. That's a correlation causation fallacy. Okay. If just about, if 29% of the top 100 cities are run by Republicans, it would stand to reason that there should be an even distribution based on the amount of cities. When you, when you, when, so listen, the point is, when you adjust for per 10,000 residents, we should see six or seven of these cities run by, Demo- run, run by Republicans, because that would be parity based on percentage of cities run by Republicans. But we don't. The only conclusion you could make is not definitively, but that it seems there is a correlation between Democrat policy and crime in cities. Correlation does not mean causation. So we don't know exactly why it's happening. But to me, my opinion is it would seem that if Democrats are running a city, things will be pretty bad. I just want to hop over here and take a look at the Ballotpedia real quick and just scroll down and show you this. Look at this. Let's take a look at the, the Republican cities. San Diego, number eight, doesn't appear on the list. That right there, okay? Your whole premise is wrong. Jacksonville does. All right. But Fort Worth, Texas is the 18th largest city. Why doesn't that appear on their list? And how about this? El Paso, Texas is number 20. Why doesn't that appear on your list? Because they're wrong. Because there is some kind of correlation between Democrat and violent crime. <laughs> It's just the way it is. You know, what blows my mind about this is I don't understand the obsession with defending the Democrats. Really, really don't. I don't care if you, I don't care about if you hate the Republicans. Uh, I can tell you this straight up. The protesters go out in the streets in St. Louis, protesting in Ferguson, all that stuff. St. Louis run by a Democrat. They complain about institutional racism and all that stuff. These, these, this count, these, 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 these jurisdictions are Democrat jurisdictions. New York City, stop and frisk, police brutality. Uh, dude. Democrats. Okay. It's Bill de Blasio right there. You know, the New York, New York. All right. And New York has the most crime, obviously. But to be fair, New York's actually really, really safe. I don't think New York actually appears when you adjust for um, population density, population size. New York actually falls off this lift. The reality is New York's actually really, really safe. Okay. But the reason you're going to see more violent crime is because you got 13 million people, which means if, you know, a percentage of them commit crimes of a larger number, but it's actually a lower percentage. So to be fair, you know, I think this, the same is true for L.A. L- L.A. is uh, is actually relatively safe. Now, this is surprising to me. You can see Houston is still, still in the list per 10,000. And Houston is is still in the top. It's the fourth in terms of uh, um, just overall size. So that, that that I do find rather interesting. But let's jump, let's, let's jump back over here and look at some more of these Republican cities. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Republican. Fresno. Uh, how about this? Mesa, Arizona, Virginia Beach, Colorado Springs, Omaha, Miami. Come on, man. Miami. Now, Miami is technically small, but Miami is made up of a like a lot of these cities. Here, here's the thing. A lot of these cities are made up of a bunch of small cities. And we when we say like Miami or L.A. or Phoenix, we're usually referring to the metropolitan area. And that may actually skew things. To be fair, maybe that's the real argument you could make. But hey, I don't think it really matters if Miami doesn't have the high, highest crime per 10,000 residents, then it looks like the problem is Democrats. So here's the point I was going to make. Stop and frisk. I, everything's in, in, in New York City. You are out protesting in the streets for these things right now. These are Democrat areas. Minneapolis. The whole sp- spark of protests was literally a Democratic city, the Democratic state with Democratic politicians, the whole thing, Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. Why are you defending these politicians? Why do you care? I don't get it. I'm not going to sit here and defend the Republicans. I've been calling them stupid quite a bit. Too dumb to stop the censorship. It's going to cost them their their reelection. I think it's fair to point out I have been favorable uh, to them in the sense of free speech and free expression, free expression and civil rights, but they've been rather ineffective. So no, I'm not going to sit here and act like Republicans are perfect. I'm just going to sit here and point out Democrats are bad at running cities. So listen, Donald Trump was factually wrong, but the gist of what he was saying was correct. Is it all of them? No. But Trump was being a little hyperbolic. He's exaggerating. It's all of them. They're all bad. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Except for one. Trump was for the most part correct. So no, I would not want to live in one of these cities. And I've actually, I moved out of them and I'm moving further and further away because 
It's more than just violent crime, man. These cities are just, you know, these the, the cities are just, they have problems, right? Let's see how this guy, this guy wraps it up. He says, to, to a large extent, of course, Trump isn't really trying to make a point beyond cities and Democrats are scary. He is not going to win cities, but he might scare suburban voters, voters he desperately needs in November by tying Democrats and crime together. In 2016, that's precisely what he tried to do, blah, blah, blah. You, you, can, you, can you give me a real argument, dude? You know what? You can't. You can't. That's it. You can't. You want to know why suburbanites might vote for Trump? Because in these cities, people romped about smashing windows and destroying everything and nobody stopped them. There you go. So you're worried about losing the suburban vote. It's not going to be because Trump made a passive comment where he was technically wrong, but the gist of what he was saying was correct. It's going to be because your cities are run like trash and you did nothing to stop the violence. I got a couple more segments coming up in a few minutes and I will see you all shortly.